Candia with Candia Hainsworth Designs and today we are discussing pricing and markup. Over the 2016 Christmas season, the most popular item in my company were these personalized baking sets. I shared my creativity with Embroidery Boss, a group I host on Facebook, and the most popular questions were regarding cost, time, and how to price. So today I'm going to show you how to price items such as these sets while recovering your initial investment, markup prices, and how to track profit percentages. Let's get started. Let's get clear on what the definition of monitor is and what your role is as the monitor. The definition of monitor is to observe and check the progress or quality of something over a period of time, okay? So it basically means to keep an eye of your systematic review, okay? In your business, it is your job to keep your eyes on everything. You are the monitor. When adding a new item to your embroidery business, such as these personalized baking sets, you must monitor all factors involved. You must be able to answer why you are adding this item in the first place, okay? So we wouldn't add something to your embroidery business that would be time consuming, it would be challenging to make, you don't want to do that, or even costly, right? So if somebody asked me, Candia, why did you decide to add the personalized baking set during the Christmas time, which is the most craziest time of the embroidery business, I would simply say because I needed something that required very little investment, minimum embroidery time, which I like to refer to as 15 minutes or less, and not much craftsmanship. I successfully achieved all three goals by monitoring cost, time, and presentation. All three factors must be monitored while selling these items. It is very important for you to understand what you're doing and why you are doing it. Monitoring the sale of this item, the time it takes to make this item, the investment, and the profit of this item will determine if your idea was great or not. And keep in mind, this item must be produced in between your other orders that are coming in. Okay, so let's talk about the budget. The budget is the amount of money available for spending that is based on the plan and how it will be used. It is important to stay within the budget and not go over. If you are purchasing items that will be taxed, you should include the taxes in your budget or have a separate plan on how taxes will be paid. My budget for these personalized bacon sets was $6. Now, keep in mind, these are not the original personalized bacon sets that I was selling over the Christmas season. Those were configured a bit differently. Some of them had cookie mix or brownie mix, measuring spoons. Some was just uh, configured with just pot holders. As a matter of fact, take a look at some of the orders that went out over the Christmas holiday. And again, my budget was $6 for this, and taxes were included in the budget already. I wanted this personalized baking set to include four personalized items combined with two baking instruments. All pieces were purchased for this item, I'm, I'm sorry, for this set was a dollar or less, okay? So the kitchen towels were 75 cents each. The set of pot holders were two for a dollar, so I'm using one, so technically I've spent 50 cents. And the cookie sheet, the other mittens, and the spatula, those were all a dollar each. So for this set, I invested $5.25. And taxes in the state of Pennsylvania is about 30 cents on $5.25, keeping me well under the budget of $6. But for video purposes, we're going just to just round it off and just say that the investment was $6.
When you are trying to come up with a fair price for your item that will be great value to your customer, yet not compromise your worth, I suggest going on Google. Then go on Etsy and eBay, and here's why. Google is going to show you the most popular companies that are likely to be million dollar companies. These are the, going to be the companies that have a production line. They're going to have a room dedicated to embroidery with a machine that can produce 30 at a time. They're not going to be like us where we have maybe three or four multiple needle machines, okay? So you don't really want to compare yourself to them, but you want to keep an eye on what they're doing because these are the companies that are also going to invest in trends and they're going to want to see what it's out there okay so you can kind of follow along to see what they're doing and kind of get an idea of what you might want to consider doing okay then the next thing is with Etsy and eBay they are going to show you the smaller companies that are going to be your competition these are likely to be mom and pop stores or small home-based companies okay so you want to kind of see what they're doing and and if you have an item that they are selling you want to pay attention to the prices right and then you want to price it alongside maybe a little bit lower a little bit higher just above the range but don't go too crazy because either if it's too low then people are going to uh question the the, the quality of it and if it's too high then you need to be wowing them from the start. Your pictures need to be on point. It needs to be clear. You need to have something in there that is better and incomparable. And if you think that you meet that criteria, go for it. But that is how you determine the price of your item. Let's talk about the markup, but first let's be clear on what the markup is. The markup is the difference between the cost of the goods and its selling price. A markup is added onto the total cost incurred by you, the business owner, in order to cover the cost of doing business and create a profit. This means the item costs one price and then is sold at a higher price. Markups are measured in percentages and in retail markups are generally about 20 to 50%. When retailers can produce their own goods and cut out the middleman, the markup can be as much as 100%. However, when the markup of 100% is substantially lower than the value of the item, the profit can be substantial. This means recovering your full investment and pricing the item double the amount still proves to be lower what the item is worth. This enables you to increase your markup until it meets the market price. Let's take a look at these personalized baking sets again. Okay, so the investment was $6, right? So if we did a 50% markup, that would be that we only add in $3 to the $6 investment. And that means that we would sell it at $9. That would be substantially lower than what the item is worth. Okay, and even if we did 100%, that's still only adding $6 to the initial investment and selling the merchandise at $12, okay? So what I would do is continuously increase it until it meets market price, okay? And in my case, I sold this for $44.50 and the market was 642% off of six dollar investment that means the profit itself is thirty eight fifty i'll show you how i determined that price so determine my price my markup my margin my profit i use a tool called the omni calculator you can find this calculator at omnicalculator.com however i recommend that you go on google first and then put in omni calculator and because this tool is available for um other items in the uh the retail fill, I would suggest that you entering markup. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of challenging finding this particular calculator. And then once you hit enter, you're going to see the link. The link is going to be omnicalculator.com uh, forward slash business forward slash markup. You're just going to click on that and then it's going to take you to the calculator. And then at the first of the calculator, first part of the calculator, you're going to see your cost. And remember, your cost is your initial investment okay then it's going to have markup margin revenue and profit the the two things that you are <clears throat> excuse me concerned about is your cost and your revenue okay because your cost is your initial investment which is six dollars in this case and then my revenue is what i am selling it at and i'm selling it at 
4450. So as you can see, the calculator automatically generates the, the numbers for me. So my markup is going to be 641.667. So when we round it off, it's a, a, a clean, even 642. Okay, and then my margin is going to be at 87% when we round it off to the nearest level um, um, number. And then my profit is going to be $38.50 because the $6, which is the initial investment minus the $44.50 brings us to $38.50. And if you wanted to just play with this, okay, let's say for example, we were selling this for $30. So I'm gonna take out the $44.50 and I'm going to enter $30, okay? That means that I am at 400% markup, which is still not bad. I mean, 600 is better, but 400 is not bad depending on if you are selling this at a flea market or, you know, an area where you can't get that maximum rate, then, you know, you still have made more than you have invested four times over. So you can't be, uh, you know, disappointed about that. However, when you price it or when you mark it up too low, for example, if I mark this up at 100%, okay, wait, let me just change it back to $6, then that means that I'm selling it at $12 and my profit is only $6, okay, which is not a large profit at all. So I'm investing $6 only to make $6, and to me, that's not what it's about. You really want to get what your embroidery services is worth, and in this case, this personalized business baking sets are much, much more than $12 value, okay? And so that is how you determine your, uh, your price, your profit, your markup, your margin. All in one is using this Omni Calculator tool on its website. You want to put in um, omnicalculator.com forward slash business forward slash markup, and I will post the link below. That's all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I have some other parts but I just really wanted to focus on pricing and markup. Now I know that people are going to ask about the ribbon and the flower and so forth. That's a whole new video and that video is going to be called supplies and I'm going to show you the formula that I use and that's why I don't include it in the pricing and the markup formula because that is a whole separate ball game and you'll see that okay I just want to know what you think about um, the information that I gave you you can post your questions below or you can come and visit me on Facebook in the group embroidery boss only that you have to either be an embroidery business owner or you have to have some kind of interest in the embroidery field uh, the criteria is that I need to see that there are um, an embroidery machine embroidery work something on your Facebook pages because this is a group that uh, we really want to kind of keep it to the point where it is for business owners and hobbyists uh, so we can exchange ideas and so forth, okay? So now we do have a criteria that must be met. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining in, and I will see you next time.